could have higher levels of forever chemicals. Published on April 18, 2024, a new study has raised concerns about the potential presence of forever chemicals in seafood. These man-made toxins, known as PER and polyfluoroalkyl substances PFAS, do not break down easily and can persist in the environment for a long time. Researchers from Dartmouth College in the USA have found that certain marine creatures, such as shrimp, prawns, and lobster, may contain alarmingly high levels of these chemicals. Health Risks Associated with Forever Chemicals Forever chemicals have been associated with various health issues, including cancer, kidney and liver problems, hormonal changes, and developmental damage to babies in the womb. While seafood is a valuable source of lean protein and omega fatty acids, the study suggests that consumers should be aware of the risks associated with PFAS exposure. Background on Forever Chemicals Forever Chemicals were developed in the 1930s and have been widely used in various products since the 1950s. They are commonly found in food packaging materials including food wrappers, takeout containers, and pizza boxes. Over time, these chemicals have entered our food chain, with seafood being particularly affected. Recommendations and Awareness Professor Megan Romano, one of the study's authors, emphasizes that the recommendation is not to avoid seafood altogether. Instead, she encourages people to continue enjoying seafood while being informed about the potential risks. Understanding what we consume is essential, and awareness can help individuals make informed dietary choices. In summary, while seafood remains a valuable part of a healthy diet, it's crucial to stay informed about the presence of forever chemicals. Researchers advocate for safety guidelines regarding PFAS in seafood to protect consumers' health. World's First AI Beauty Contest The world's first AI beauty pageant, known as Miss AI, has been announced and AI-generated women can compete to be crowned the digital equivalent of Miss World. Here are some details about the contest. Miss AI Competition The Miss AI pageant is organized by the World AI Creator Awards, Wayakas, a global program dedicated to recognizing the achievements of AI creators worldwide. Competitors can enter the AI-generated women they have created for a chance to win the Miss AI crown. Contestants will be judged based on their beauty, the skill and implementation of AI tools used to create them, and their social media influence as influencers. An expert panel of four judges, including two AI-generated influencers, Emily Pellegrini and Aitana Lopez, and two real people, marketing expert Andrew Block and pageant historian Sally Ann Fawcett, will rank the contestants. Prizes The AI creator crowned Miss AI will receive a $5,000 cash prize along with access to Imagine Education's mentorship program, worth $3,000, and PR support, worth over $5,000. The runner-up and third-placed contestants will also win prizes. How to enter to participate, competitors need to submit an image of their AI-generated woman. They must also answer questions ranging from what would be your one dream to make the world a better place, to technical details about the AI used. Judging and announcement. The Miss AI contestants will be narrowed down to a top 10 before the final three are announced at an online award ceremony in May. AI and Beauty Contests. In addition to Miss AI, other beauty contests have also explored AI judging. For instance, a contest in 2016 evaluated selfies submitted via an app using a robot jury to select winners. AI creators like Lexi, Aitana Lopez, Emily, and Cassidy have gained popularity for their AI-generated content related to beauty pageants on platforms like TikTok and YouTube. Remember, the future of beauty pageants may include AI contestants alongside real-life participants, bridging traditional pageantry with technology. If you're interested in participating, you can create your own AI beauty contestant and join the exciting world of digital beauty pageants. Middle East tensions, explosions in Israel and the West Bank raise concerns. While the exact source of the strikes is still under investigation, all signs point to Iran. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, has a history of proxy warfare in the region, supporting militant groups and destabilizing neighboring countries. Israel has long been a target of Iran's aggression, and tensions have been simmering for years. Israel's response Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett addressed the nation, emphasizing the gravity of the situation. We will not tolerate attacks on our soil, he declared. Our air defenses are on high alert, and we will respond with force if necessary. The IDF has been placed on high alert and security measures have been intensified across the country. Citizens have been urged to remain vigilant and seek shelter if necessary. 
Jerusalem, Israel. The Middle East is once again at the center of global attention as explosions rock multiple parts of Israel and the West Bank. Israeli and U.S. air defenses have intercepted strikes believed to be originating from Iran, escalating an already volatile situation. The explosions. Reports of explosions began flooding in from various locations in Israel and the West Bank. Residents in cities such as Tel Aviv, Haifa, and Jerusalem were jolted awake by the sudden blasts. The Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, swiftly responded, activating air defense systems to intercept incoming missiles. U.S. Involvement The United States, a staunch ally of Israel, has also expressed concern. President Joe Biden held an emergency meeting with his national security team to assess the situation. In a statement, the White House reaffirmed its commitment to Israel's security and condemned any aggression against the country. Regional Implications The escalating tensions have broad implications for the entire Middle East region. The delicate balance of power and historical animosities between nations could further complicate matters. International leaders are closely monitoring the situation, hoping for a de-escalation and a peaceful resolution. South Korean General Election 2024 Opposition Landslide Victory By Reuters Seoul, in a resounding blow to President Yoon suk yeol and his conservative party, South Korea's liberal opposition parties secured a landslide victory in the 22nd general election held on April 10, 2024. The election results signal a significant shift in the country's political landscape, with the opposition gaining control of the National Assembly. Election Results the Democratic Party, DP, the main opposition party, is projected to win more than 170 of the 300 seats in the new legislature, according to data from the National Election Commission and network broadcasters. With over 99% of the votes counted, the DP's victory is clear. Additionally, a splinter liberal party aligned with the DP is expected to secure at least 10 seats. DP leader Lee Jae-myung, who won a seat in the city of Incheon, west of the capital Seoul, emphasized that voters had expressed their judgment against the Yoon suk yeol administration. He stated, When voters chose me, it was your judgment against the Yoon suk yeol administration, and you are giving the Democratic Party the duty to take responsibility for the livelihood of the people and create a better society. Referendum on Yoon's leadership The parliamentary election was closely watched as a referendum on President Yoon suk yeol his popularity has waned due to a cost-of-living crisis and a series of political scandals. Opposition candidates consistently criticized Yoon's management of the economy and his refusal to acknowledge his wife's improper acceptance of a Dior bag as a gift. First Lady Kim Kian hee who has not been seen in public since December 15, was absent when Yoon cast his vote. Analysts and opposition party members view her absence as a serious political liability for the president and his People Power Party, PPP. Yoon's political future. The PPP is projected to win just over 100 seats, preventing the opposition from achieving a supermajority that could override presidential vetoes and pass constitutional amendments. However, as Yoon approaches the end of the first two years of his five-year single term, he is likely to slip into a lame duck status. His ability to pass legislation will be significantly hampered by the poor showing of his party. The National Election Commission, NEC, is expected to announce the official results later on Thursday. The election saw a record turnout, with nearly 29.7 million people, 67% of eligible voters, casting their ballots. While this turnout surpassed the 2022 presidential vote that narrowly brought Yoon to power, it reflects the electorate's strong engagement in shaping the country's political future. As South Korea's opposition celebrates its victory, President Yoon faces a challenging road ahead, navigating a divided parliament and addressing pressing issues in a nation seeking change. <music> Celestial Dance, the Great American Solar Eclipse of 2024 In the vast expanse of North America's skies, a cosmic ballet unfolded on April 8, 2024. The stage was set and the celestial performers, Earth, Moon and Sun, came together in a mesmerizing pas de trois. This was no ordinary dance. It was the Great American Solar Eclipse, a spectacle that graced parts of Mexico, 15 U.S. states, and eastern Canada. The moon takes center stage. As dawn painted the horizon, the moon, our silent partner in this cosmic waltz, began its slow traverse across the sun's fiery face. Tens of millions of eager spectators craned their necks upward, donning oversized eclipse glasses. The moon's shadow swept across the land, casting a spell of awe and wonder, the path of totality. 
The heart of the drama lay within the path of totality, a ribbon of darkness stretching from Mexico's Pacific coast to the Canadian wilderness. Here the sun's brilliance dimmed and day turned to twilight. In Texas, where the eclipse made its grand entrance, lifelong Texans marveled. For them, this was the first total solar eclipse since 1878, a rare celestial encore, weather's fickle dance. But the weather, too, had a role to play. Clouds and storms threatened to upstage the celestial performance. In Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, 20 million souls held their breath. Would the skies clear in time? In Dallas, the storms loomed scheduled to arrive after the eclipse's peak. Houston, Austin, and San Antonio watched, hoping for a celestial reprieve, bananas and eclipses. And what of bananas? Let's measure the moon's shadow in fruity lengths. An average banana stretches about 7.5 inches. Now, imagine stacking 46,449 bananas, one atop the other. That's the height of Mount Everest, but today, it's our eclipse yardstick, the eclipse's encore. As the moon completed its celestial pirouette, the sun emerged triumphant. Daylight returned, but hearts remained touched by the ethereal. The next total solar eclipse on U.S. soil won't grace us until March 2033, and it'll be Alaska's private show. For the contiguous U.S., the next rendezvous with totality awaits in August 2045, from California to Florida. And so, dear Skywatchers, we bid adieu to the Great American Eclipse of 2024. It danced across our hearts, leaving memories etched in starlight. Until the next cosmic overture, keep your eyes on the heavens, where bananas measure time and eclipses weave their magic. Brent crude ascends, geopolitical tensions fuel price surge. By Financial News Today. In a market stirred by geopolitical unrest, Brent crude oil prices have soared, settling above $90 for the first time since October. The price surge. Brent futures. Brent futures for June climbed above $91 a barrel before settling at $90.65, marking a 1.5% increase. WTI futures. U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI futures for May also rose, settling at $86.59 a barrel, a 1.4% rise. Geopolitical tensions. Israeli embassies on high alert. Reports of Israeli embassies being placed on high alert due to threats of Iranian attacks have contributed to the heightened tensions. Iran's vow for revenge. Following an attack that killed high-ranking Iranian military personnel, Iran has vowed revenge against Israel, though Israel has not claimed responsibility for the incident. U.S. stance. Public rebuke. Washington issued a strong public rebuke toward Israel, indicating a shift in tone and warning that U.S. policy on Gaza will hinge on Israel's actions regarding the safety of Palestinian civilians. New sanctions. The United States imposed new Iran-related counterterrorism sanctions, aiming to disrupt Iran's ability to fund its proxy groups and support for Russia's war in Ukraine. Support for Ukraine. NATO membership. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken stated that Ukraine will eventually join NATO, with support for the country remaining rock-solid among member states. Oil supply dynamics. OPEC Plus meeting. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies, OPEC Plus, including Russia, maintained their oil supply policy and urged some countries to enhance compliance with output cuts. Conclusion. The convergence of geopolitical events has led to a bullish sentiment in the oil market, driving prices to new heights. As the world watches these unfolding events, the impact on global oil prices continues to be a subject of intense focus. <music>of us want to live to 100. Wait until you hear how much that retirement costs. From USA Today, the cost of a century, the price tag of living to 100. As the possibility of living to 100 becomes more realistic, Americans are faced with the daunting question of how much it will cost to fund a retirement that could last nearly four decades. Longevity's financial implications. A recent report from Corbridge Financial reveals that while over half of Americans aim to reach the centenarian mark, the financial implications are staggering. With the nation's median household income at $74,580, retirees might need about $60,000 annually to maintain their lifestyle. This means a retirement budget of approximately $2.3 million for those living to 100. Retirement realities. The average American retires at 62, which, for a centenarian, equates to 38 years of retirement. Social security may cover a portion, but the bulk of the financial burden falls on savings. Unfortunately, only 27% of respondents in the Corbridge survey feel confident they won't outlive their retirement funds. The fear factor. The fear of running out of money surpasses the fear of death for two-thirds of the surveyed individuals. 
This highlights the psychological impact of financial insecurity in one's golden years. Demographic destiny. The number of Americans aged 100 and older is expected to quadruple by 2054. However, retirement experts are concerned that many will deplete their savings well before their last breath. A looming crisis. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink emphasizes the growing retirement crisis, noting that building a secure retirement today is far more challenging than it was three decades ago. Conclusion. The dream of a long life comes with the necessity of robust financial planning. As we approach the era of centenarians, it's clear that preparing for a financially secure retirement is more crucial than ever. Baltimore Bridge Collapse, a tragic day on the Patapsco River. By the Associated Press. Since early Tuesday morning, Baltimore has been grappling with the aftermath of a devastating bridge collapse. Here's what we know so far. The incident. A container ship lost power and collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing it to snap and plunge into the icy waters of the Patapsco River. Several vehicles tumbled into the river, leading to a frantic search and rescue operation. The impact. Mass casualty incident. Authorities are treating this as a mass casualty multi-agency incident. Approximately 20 people are missing and multiple vehicles are submerged. Unsafe conditions. Rescuers face challenges due to debris hanging from the collapsed structure, freezing temperatures, and limited visibility. The bridge. The Francis Scott Key Bridge, a vital link of Interstate 695, the Baltimore Beltway, extends over the Patapsco River. It spans 1.6 miles and serves as the outermost crossing of Baltimore's harbor. Survivors' accounts. One survivor described the collapse as something out of an action movie. Others shared their experiences of being trapped and the chaos that ensued. Historical context. The bridge is named after Francis Scott Key, who penned the lyrics to the Star-Spangled Banner while observing a battle in these same waters over 200 years ago. Bridge disasters. The collapse of human-built spans has occurred before, from Texas Queen Isabella Causeway in 2001 to Florida's Sunshine Skyway Bridge in 1980. As rescue efforts continue, Baltimore mourns the loss and grapples with the impact of this tragic event. Our hearts go out to the families affected by this catastrophe. TikTok legislation issue. The U.S. House of Representatives has recently passed legislation concerning the ownership of TikTok, a popular social media platform. The bill mandates that ByteDance, the China-based parent company of TikTok, must divest its stake in the app. This action stems from concerns over national security and data privacy, given the app's potential access to sensitive user data and the Chinese government's influence over domestic companies. The legislation has sparked a significant response from TikTok's user base, many of whom are young Americans. TikTok has actively encouraged its users to reach out to their representatives, providing a direct link to contact information through the app. This campaign aims to preserve the platform that has become a vibrant community for millions in the U.S. Senator Tom Tillis's office reported receiving approximately 1,000 calls following the House's decision, reflecting the intense public interest and concern over the future of TikTok in the country. WorldCoin, the future of digital identity and currency. WorldCoin is a groundbreaking project that merges artificial intelligence with cryptocurrency to redefine online identity and financial stability. Spearheaded by Sam Altman, co-founder of OpenAI, WorldCoin has been making headlines for its innovative approach and the controversies it has sparked. The vision of WorldCoin. The project aims to create a secure digital ID, the World ID, using iris scans to combat online scams, bots, and AI imposters. This unique identifier, powered by zero-knowledge proofs, could potentially streamline online interactions and transactions, offering a single sign-on solution for the digital age. Controversies and Challenges Despite its ambitious goals, WorldCoin has faced scrutiny over privacy concerns related to biometric data collection. Kenya, for instance, has suspended WorldCoin activities pending an investigation into its practices. The project's ability to protect user data remains a critical point of debate. Technological innovations. WorldCoin's use of orbs for iris scanning has been described as both revolutionary and invasive. The project's success hinges on its ability to balance innovation with ethical considerations ensuring user privacy while advancing digital identity solutions. Global impact and adoption. As WorldCoin continues to expand, 
its potential to transform online identity verification and provide a new form of cryptocurrency is immense. The project's recent initiatives, such as the Community Grants Program and partnerships with trading firms, signal a growing interest in World ID and its applications. Conclusion WorldCoin represents a significant step towards a future where digital identity and currency are intertwined. Its progress and adoption will depend on navigating the complex landscape of technology, privacy, and ethics. As the project evolves, it will undoubtedly continue to shape discussions around the future of digital identity and financial systems. Border security deadlock heightens risk of government shutdown. In a tense standoff on Capitol Hill, the fate of the nation hangs in the balance. A border security deadlock threatens to plunge the federal government into a shutdown, casting a shadow over critical services and leaving millions of Americans in limbo. The high stakes battle. At the heart of the impasse lies the contentious issue of border security funding. With the clock ticking, Congress and the White House find themselves locked in a high stakes game of political brinkmanship. Funding for approximately 70% of the government is set to expire imminently unless a resolution is reached. The consequences of failure are dire federal agencies shuttered, paychecks delayed, and essential programs left hanging. The immigration divide. Disagreements over immigration policy have fueled the deadlock. Lawmakers grapple with questions of border wall funding, asylum seekers, and the delicate balance between security and compassion. The fault lines run deep, with each side digging in, unwilling to yield ground. Shutdown scenarios. If no compromise emerges, the government faces a partial shutdown. National parks could close, passport processing delayed, and food inspections curtailed. The ripple effects extend beyond federal employees, small businesses, contractors, and everyday citizens would feel the pinch. Echoes of the past. This isn't the first time the nation has teetered on the brink. Recent history bears witness to government shutdowns, each leaving scars on the body politic. The specter of dysfunction looms large, and the American people watch with bated breath. Leadership in the spotlight. The burden falls squarely on our elected officials. Can they rise above partisanship? Can they find common ground? The eyes of the nation turn to the halls of power, seeking leadership that transcends ideology. In a landmark move, Congress has passed a historic bill that promises to revolutionize America's infrastructure. The bill, a cornerstone of the current administration's agenda, pledges to inject billions into the nation's veins, revitalizing aging roads, reinforcing weary bridges, and rejuvenating public transportation systems. A unifying leap forward. This bipartisan effort represents a significant achievement in a time often marked by division. It signals a collective stride towards unity and progress, with lawmakers from both sides of the aisle coming together to lay the groundwork for a more connected future. The bill's highlights. The bill earmarks substantial funds for the repair and construction of highways, ensuring safer and more efficient travel for millions. It allocates resources to modernize public transit, reducing commute times and environmental impact. A portion of the budget is dedicated to the development of sustainable infrastructure, aligning with global efforts to combat climate change. Economic implications. Economists predict that this massive influx of funding will create jobs, stimulate economic growth, and enhance the nation's competitive edge in the global market. Small businesses, construction firms, and local communities stand to benefit significantly from the upcoming projects. Breaking news from the New York Times. Massive blizzard blankets California's Sierra Nevada mountains. In an extraordinary weather event, a colossal blizzard has descended upon the western United States, unleashing its fury on California's majestic Sierra Nevada mountains. As snowflakes dance and swirl, the landscape transforms into a pristine white canvas, with up to 10 feet of snow predicted in the higher elevations. Impact and challenges. The blizzard's relentless assault has disrupted normalcy, challenging residents and travelers alike. Interstate 80, a vital artery connecting the region, remains shut in both directions due to the sheer volume of snow. Emergency crews, snowplows, and tireless volunteers battle the elements, striving to keep roads clear and communities safe. The unyielding storm. As the storm rages on, it tests the mettle of those who call this rugged terrain home. Snowdrifts pile high against buildings, and icicles dangle like fragile chandel ears. Schools suspend classes, businesses shudder, and families huddle by crackling fireplaces, their breath visible in the frigid air.
pastimes and activities, giving advice. Thanks for meeting with me during your lunch hour. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm happy to help. What's going on? Oh, you know the usual. Should I take this new job or do I stick with my current one? Well, I think it's time for a change, don't you? They pay you late, and you are unhappy. Do you really think so? I know so, and I've been listening to you complain for over a year now. Trust me, take the job. What do you have to lose? Pastimes and activities. Weddings. Doesn't the bride look beautiful in that wedding dress? Yes, she looks amazing, and the groom is so romantic. I just heard the story of how they got engaged. He proposed to her during a candlelight dinner in London. Did you know that was where they went to school? Oh, wonderful! And the honeymoon. What a great idea! Most people just go to the beach for a week after they tie the knot, but they plan on heading to California and cruising the coast on their motorcycle. Really, what a fantastic idea! This is by far the best wedding I've ever been to. Pastimes and activities, hobbies. I'm so happy this week of midterm exams is finished. Same here. I'm looking forward to relaxing in the mountains this weekend. I've planned a little hike in the woods, and I'm going to take a canoe trip down the river if the weather cooperates. Oh, fun! I'm going to Michigan. I'm taking my camera because fall is coming fast. The leaves are already turning all shades of red and orange. It will be awesome. Next time you go there, I'll join you. I've heard Michigan is a great place to go canoeing. Pastimes and activities, giving your opinion. Where should we take a vacation this year? Let's decide soon. Well, I'd like to go somewhere warm. How about the beach? Or we could rent a cabin on the lake. You want to go to the beach again? <laughs> I want to ski this winter. How about a compromise? What about traveling to the Alps in Europe next April? We can find a ski resort on a lake. Oh, we've never been to Europe before, but I don't know if it will be sunny and warm then. I need to do some research first. That will help me make up my mind. Pastimes and activities at the pet store. Oh, what a beautiful cat! What do you think? I think I'd rather get a dog. Dogs are more loyal than cats. Yes, but there's so much work. Would you be willing to walk it every single day and clean up after it? Hmm. Good point. What about a bird? Or a fish. We'd have to invest a lot of money in a cage or a fish tank, and I really don't know how to take care of a bird or a fish. Well, we're obviously not ready to get a pet yet. Yeah, you're right. Let's go grab some coffee and talk about it. Pastimes and activities. Taking a vacation. I just bought a ticket to New York City. I'm so excited to see the city. Good for you! Traveling is so much fun. I love discovering new places and new people. When are you leaving? Next week. I'm taking the red eye. It was cheaper. Hopefully, I'll be able to sleep on the plane. I wish I could go with you. New York City is a magical place. You'll have so much fun. I hope so. I'm going to visit my brother who lives there. I will stay for a week and then take the train down to Washington D.C. That sounds like a great vacation. I'm looking forward to a week at the beach for my summer vacation. I just want to relax. Pastimes and activities. A night at the theater. What a fantastic performance! Thank you for inviting me to the musical. You are welcome. I'm happy you enjoyed the show. The choreography of the dancers was incredible. It reminds me of when I used to dance. I know you were such a talented ballerina. Do you miss dancing? 
Oh, that's very kind of you, Shannon. I do miss it sometimes, but I will always be a fan of the arts. That's why I love going to musicals, because it's the perfect combination of song, dance, and theater. Absolutely. I'm glad you're still an art fan, too. Thank you for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to attend an arts event with you and learn something new. Past times and activities. What's your favorite sport? What time is that soccer game on? I thought it started at noon. We must have had the wrong time. Oh well, soccer's not my favorite sport anyway. I much prefer basketball. Oh really? I thought your favorite sport was tennis. I'm a big fan of basketball too. How about a game sometime? Sure thing. Why don't we go shoot some hoops now, since the soccer game isn't on? Excellent idea. Let's go. Pastimes and activities. What are you good at? So, what should we do? Well, I like to do arts and crafts, and I'm really good at drawing. What do you think? Hmm. How about playing a board game? That'd be more fun. Okay. Let's play Scrabble. I'm really good at spelling too. Oh yeah. We'll see about that. <laughs> Pastimes and activities. At the movies. We'd like two tickets for the 3:30 show, please. Here you go. Enjoy the movie. Would you mind moving over one so my friend and I can sit together? No, not at all. Thanks a lot. Pastimes and activities. How old are you? I'm really excited for Aunt Mary's surprise birthday party this afternoon. Aren't you? Yeah. How old is she? She'll be fifty-five on May fourteenth. Wow. I didn't know that my mom was older. She's gonna be fifty-seven on September second. Anyway, Aunt Mary's gonna be so surprised to see us all here. I know, but we still have to get all the food set up before she gets here. Okay, we're all ready now. Shh, she's here. Surprise! Around town. Transportation. Should we take a taxi or a bus to the mall? Let's take a bus. It's impossible to get a taxi during rush hour. Isn't that a bus stop over there? Yes. Oh, there's a bus now. We'll have to run to catch it. Oh no, we just missed it. No problem. There'll be another one in ten minutes. Around town, shopping. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for a sweater in a size medium. Let's see. Here's a nice white one. What do you think? I think I'd rather have it in blue. Okay. Here's blue in a medium. Would you like to try it on? Okay. Yes, I love it. It fits perfectly. How much is it? It's fifty dollars. It will be fifty-three dollars with tax. Perfect. I'll take it. Around town, catching up after class. Hey, how did your physics exam go? Not bad, thanks. I'm just glad it's over. How about you? How'd your presentation go? Oh, it went really well. Thanks for helping me with it. No problem. So, do you feel like studying tomorrow for our math exam? Yeah, sure. Come over around ten o'clock after breakfast. All right. I'll bring my notes. Around town, at the post office. What can I do for you today? I need to mail this package to New York, please. Okay. Let's see how much it weighs. It's about five pounds. If you send it express, it will get there tomorrow. Or you can send it priority, and it will get there by Saturday. Saturday is fine. How much will that be? Eleven thirty-five. Do you need anything else? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I need a book of stamps too. Okay, your total comes to twenty dollars and thirty-five cents. 
Around Town Running Errands Hi there, how can I help you? Well, I'm in town visiting for a few days, and I need to get some things done while I'm here. Sure, what do you need? I need to get my hair cut. I also need to have my new pants hemmed. Okay, here's a map of the city. There's a good hair salon here, which is just a block away, and there's a tailor right here. Is there anything else? Yes, I'll need to have my car serviced before my long drive home. <laughs> no problem. There's a good mechanic a few blocks away. Around town. At the supermarket. Hey, Julia, look at those desserts. How about baking some cookies today? Hmm, yeah, that's a great idea. While we're here, let's pick up the ingredients. Okay, what do we need? The recipe calls for flour, sugar, and butter. Oh, and we also need eggs and chocolate chips. Why don't you get the dairy ingredients? You'll find those in the refrigerated section in the back of the store. I'll get the dry ingredients. They're in aisle 10. Great, let's meet at the checkout. Okay, see you there. Around town, calling for help. Hey, that car just ran a red light and hit that truck. Is anyone hurt? I don't know. Let's call 911. Hello? I'd like to report a car accident near the post office on Charles Street. It looks like a man is hurt. Yes, it just happened. Okay, thanks. Bye. What did they say? They're going to send an ambulance and a police car right away. Good, they're here. I hope the man is okay. I know. You have to be so careful when you're driving. Around town. Asking directions. Excuse me, could you tell me where the library is? Yes, it's that way. You go three blocks to Washington Street, then turn right. It's on the corner, across from the bank. Thanks. I've only been in town a few days, so I really don't know my way around yet. Oh, I know how you feel. We moved here a year ago, and I still don't know where everything is. Around town. At the doctor's office. What seems to be the problem? Well, I have a bad cough and a sore throat. I also have a headache. How long have you had these symptoms? About three days now, and I'm really tired, too. Hmm. Sounds like you've got the flu. Take aspirin every four hours and get plenty of rest. Make sure you drink lots of fluids. Call me if you're still sick next week. Okay, thanks. Around town. Ordering a meal. Hello, I'll be your waiter today. Can I start you off with something to drink? Yes, I'll have iced tea, please. And I'll have lemonade. Okay, are you ready to order or do you need a few minutes? I think we're ready. I'll have the tomato soup to start and the roast beef with mashed potatoes and peas. How do you want the beef? Rare, medium, or well done? Well done, please. And I'll just have the fish with potatoes and a salad. Introductions and small talk. Weather report. It's freezing outside. What happened to the weather report? I thought this cold front was supposed to pass. Yeah, I thought so too. That's what I read online this morning. I guess the wind chill is really driving down the temperature. Can we go inside? I feel like my toes are starting to go numb. Introductions and small talk. Coincidences. Well, hello there, Julia. Long time no see. Meg, hi. What a coincidence. I haven't hi. seen you in ages. What are you doing here? I just got a new job in the city, so I'm shopping for some clothes. Hey, what do you think of this shirt? Hmm, well, you know how much I love blue. See, I've got the same shirt. You always did have good taste. What a small world. Introductions and small talk. A telephone call. 
Hello. Hi, Stephanie. How are things at the office? Hi, Luke. How are you? Can you please stop and pick up extra paper for the computer printer? What did you say? Can you repeat that, please? Did you say pick up ink for the printer? Sorry, the phone is cutting out. Can you hear me now? No, I need more computer paper. Listen, I'll text you exactly what I need. Thanks, Luke. Talk to you later. Thanks, Stephanie. Sorry, my phone has really bad reception here. Introductions and small talk. A telephone call. Hi, Alice. It's John. How are you? Oh, hi, John. I was just thinking about you. Huh, that's nice. I was wondering if you'd like to go to a movie tonight. Sure, I'd love to. What's playing? I was thinking about that new comedy, Lights Out. What do you think? Sounds great. Okay, I'll pick you up around seven thirty. The movie starts at eight. See you then. Bye. Introductions and small talk. What time is it? What time is it? We're going to be late. It's a quarter after seven. We're on time. Don't panic. But I thought we had to be at the restaurant by seven thirty for the surprise party. We'll never make it there with all this evening traffic. Sure, we will. Rush hour is almost over. Anyway, the party starts at eight. But I do need help with directions. Can you call the restaurant and ask them where we park our car? Introductions and small talk. Informal introductions. Who's the tall woman next to Barbara? That's her friend Mary. Didn't you meet her at Steve's party? No, I wasn't at Steve's party. Oh, then let me introduce you to her now. Mary, this is my friend Jim. Hi, Jim. Nice to meet you. You too. Would you like a drink? Sure. Let's go get one. Introductions and small talk. Informal introductions. How's it going? Fine, thanks. And you? Just fine. Where are you off to? To the library. I've got a history exam next week and need to start studying. Ugh. Oh no. Well, I'll see you later then. Good luck. Thanks. See you later. Introductions and small talk. Formal greetings. Good morning, Professor Austin. How are you doing? Good morning, James. I'm doing well. And you? I'm great, thank you. This is my friend Emma. She is thinking about applying to this college. She has a few questions. Would you mind telling us about the process, please? Hello, Emma. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm more than happy to speak with you. Please stop by my office next week. It's a pleasure to meet you, Professor. Thank you so much for helping us. Don't mention it. Hopefully, I will be able to answer your question. What have you been doing this week? Well, mostly all of my days start with getting up at 6:30 and going to the pool to practice with my year-round swim team. At eight, I head over to another pool to coach a swim team. That's one of my part-time jobs. I finish at 11 and get home around 11:30 or so. Usually, I go home and eat lunch and get my relaxation for the day. What do you do in the afternoons? After lunch, I usually go back to the pool. Either to lifeguard or to hang out with friends. I love to catch a minute if I can to read. After that, I usually do dinner with the family. That's from five to six. At six, I head back to the pool. I coach a night practice. After practice, like nine-ish, I spend time with the family. We play Wii or watch a movie. Between ten and eleven, probably, I'll check the computer, talk on the phone with my friend, and head to bed. Full days. What do you do on the weekends? On the weekend, I usually have Saturday off. I like to get out with my friends, go shopping, just relax. It's nice not to be at the pool. 
On Sunday, I usually go to church and do lunch with the family and just hang out. You said you like to read. What kinds of things do you like to read? This summer, I'm doing a class for school next year. It's called We the People. I'm actually reading constitutional books. Sounds dull, but I find it interesting. We read about how the Constitution was written and the deeper meaning of it. If I get any free time in the middle of the day, I sleep. Those early mornings make me tired. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Hmm. Don't close yourself off. Take advantage of all the opportunities you have. Have a full life. Don't think you can't learn more. I think I learn something more nearly every day. What have you been doing this week? I bought a ukulele. I'm studying for exams and I'm playing the drums. Where do you play drums? At my house. I have lessons there. A teacher comes to my house. Why are you learning to play drums? I just think it's a cool instrument to learn. I like funk and rock music. Funk is just so upbeat. Why did you buy a ukulele? Because I'd like to learn how to play. We'd play Jamaican music. I've heard lots of it and I thought it would be fun to learn how to play it. Is there anything that you are looking forward to? This summer, I'm going to Puerto Rico. We visit there a lot because my mom is from there. We visit family and have vacation there. My grandfather, my dad's dad, will visit us there. My sister's in college now. She'll go with us. Do you like Puerto Rico? It's very nice and tropical. They have nice beaches. I like the fruit they have, different foods. I really like platanos. What do you hope to do after high school? I'd like to go to college and later get my Ph.D. I've thought about studying U.S. history. I want to be a professor when I grow up. I'd like to be a teacher. I like history. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? To just work hard in school. What have you been doing this week? I've been going to school. I'm taking art, world history, Spanish, geometry, English, and earth science. They're all honors classes, except Spanish. There are no honors classes in Spanish. What are you doing in art class? We learn how to draw things. We learn how to hold pencils and get different shades. I'm drawing a tiger right now. We also learn to use pastels and paint. Is it your favorite class? Yes. Have you been doing anything else? Hanging out with my friend Claire. I always wrestle her little brother. I sleep a lot, really, and I eat a lot. It doesn't show, though. Are you growing a lot? Teenage boys often eat and sleep a lot because they're growing a lot. I've been growing for quite a while now. Is there anything happening at school? We have been having midterms. They're the middle of the year test. The tests are hard, especially in honors classes. Is there anything that you're looking forward to? It's summer. My family's going to California. I have a mother and a father and a little sister. My mother says she's sick and tired of staying in the house, so we're hitting up Cali. We'll go to Los Angeles. I'm just sort of going along with whatever my mom says. What do you want to do after high school? Go to college. I want to study health sciences or medicine. I think I can earn a lot of money that way. I like to do sports medicine. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? What's up? So, what have you been doing this week? Well, Sunday I went to church and I called my friend Shelby. I was going to go by myself, but she said her parents had left for church without her, so we went together. After church, we went to the store and got food and ate outside in the park, and that was really beautiful. I've gone to school all week. After school, I went to work a couple of days. I work at a retirement community. Maybe you should explain what a retirement community is. Okay. It's like a big neighborhood with rich old people. It's a nice place to stay, and it has an assisted living section for people who need nurses. It's really fun, but it's hard work, too. I work in the dining room. I really enjoy working with elderly people. Some of them are my friends. Not all the time, but sometimes you can tell you bless them just by being there. What else have you been doing? I started track this week. The track season started two months ago, but two of the girls got hurt, so the coach asked if I would run. Everyone else was in shape, so I was running and inside going, ow. That was Friday, so then I went to my second job to waitress at a Japanese restaurant. It was really busy, so I pretty much worked my butt off because you have to clean and a lot of things. A friend picked me up, and we went to her house for a birthday party after work. 
we ate way too much ice cream and stayed up way too late because I had to get up early Saturday morning and go to school to help with landscaping for community service. At my school, a certain number of hours of community service are required each year, so I choose things I like. I had a really good time, as much fun as you can have weeding and mowing and potting flowers. I killed my back because I had to go between the cracks of the bricks and the sidewalk and clean out moss. It was kind of hard. I went home, took a nap, and then I went to work again at the Japanese place. So you are really busy. Do you enjoy your life? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I don't like being so busy. Today I couldn't go to church because I had to go to work at 11. So I got a teaching tape and some food and got back in bed and listened to the tape and ate breakfast in bed. I copied part of Psalm 146 onto a card and put it in my pocket when I went to work because it blessed me tons. Because everything is better when you're focused on God and not on yourself. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? I hope people who read this won't think I'm lazy or anything. I really don't think they will. What have you been doing this week? This is the last week of school for us. Did you do anything to celebrate the last day of school? A couple of us went to the movies after the last day. We wanted to see a movie called The Loser. It's kind of like an action movie. What are you going to do this summer? I'm going to New Orleans. It's a Habitat for Humanity trip. We'll be building a house and also like sightseeing. I think there are 13 of us kids and then there's parents. We'll be there a week and then there's a swim team. Tell me about the swim team. We have our first meet on Saturday and then another on Tuesday. I swim backstroke and butterfly the best. We practice every day, unless weather conditions won't let us. We have meets every weekend all summer to the beginning of August. Are you planning anything else? My dad and I are going to Boy Scout summer camp. This is like my fifth time. I'm going to be doing archery and a couple other merit badges. We stay in Adirondacks. They got three sides, a roof, and an open front. We go to a big mess hall for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And there are lots of Indian-themed things. There's a big lake and we go swimming. There are also, like, a lot of sports and stuff. What is your dad going to do? He's going to be hurting children, basically. He's going to be one of the main dads for the troop, making sure we don't get hurt and stuff. Is there anything else that you like to do? I really like music mostly now. I'm trying to learn to play the piano. That's going to be hard. I already play the trumpet. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Hello, from America. What have you been doing this week? Well, school every day, and then after school, my friend drives me home, and normally I go to her house, and we do our homework together, and then I go home after that and eat dinner with my family. Did you do anything extra or different this week? Also this week, I was driving with the driver education teacher to get my learner's permit. Please tell what a learner's permit is. It's for driving a car. First, I have to take three weeks of classes, four hours a day, four days a week, to study for the book test. Then the big written test is 200 questions. Then you have to drive for six hours with an instructor. Then when you're 15 years old, you can have a learner's permit. What can you do with a learner's permit? You can drive anytime during the day until nine o'clock p.m. with an adult in the car with you. The adult has to have a driving license for five years. Then when you're 16 years old, you can get your driving license. What do you do on weekends? Sunday, I go to church and youth group. On Friday nights, I normally have a sleepover with friends. What is a sleepover? I go over to a friend's house and stay there the night. We talk girl talk. We eat popcorn, watch movies, and talk about boys. Pretty much what every girl does. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Just, hey, I guess. What have you been doing this week? I want to talk about what I did two weeks ago. Is that okay? Well, sure. What did you do two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I went to Disney World in Florida. It was for our eighth grade trip. About 200 kids went, and we went for four days. We went by bus, and it was a 13-hour trip to get there and a 13-hour trip to get back. What did you do there? On the first day, we went to Epcot Center, and they do a lot of scientific research and stuff. So we learned about chemistry there, and we rode on the GM test track and saw some cars like water-powered cars and solar-powered cars. The second day, we went to the Hall of Presidents at Disney World, and they had these robots, like models of the president, that moved and talked, and they were the same height as the real presidents and the same shoe size and everything. 
was cool. The robots talked about the history of America. It was about the difficulties we went through in the past and how the presidents dealt with it. And they talked about the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln talked then and talked about how slavery was wrong. What else did you do? The third day, we went to the animal kingdom and rode on a new ride. It's called Everest, like Mount Everest. It's a roller coaster. It goes like 40 miles an hour and it goes backwards part of the way and a Yeti pops up. We rode that thing like 18 times. We just rode it all day. One of my friends threw up everywhere, so we took a bus back to where we were staying. I roomed with three people, and our room was connected to a room with three more boys and one of my friend's dad. And three of the seven people on the bus ride threw up. It was a crazy bus ride. That night, people were sick. It was from riding Everest. On the fourth day, we went to MGM. And they closed a section of the roller coaster and made it so it was just for the 8th graders. It was awesome. They closed down that part of the park for us, and that was the most fun, and we rode it all day. Then we came home on the bus, and it was 6 in the morning and our parents came to get us. We slept on the bus. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? I hope you get to go to Disney World someday. What have you been doing this week? I've been grounded. My report card was so bad that it hit from my parents. Then the school mailed another one. I was at my grandmother's house when my dad came and got me. I can't do guitar lessons or hang out with my friends or go on the computer. I'm grounded from the internet. How long are you grounded for? Until my grades get better. Are you studying hard? Yeah, I have no choice. That's the only thing I can do now. I have to study. What are you doing here today? Every two months I come here with my family. I like it. We feed people who are homeless or who have been in jail. I serve and help make food. What classes are you taking at school? Uh, English, world history, art, earth and environmental science, algebra one, uh, PE and health. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Don't do drugs. I've seen people do drugs and it's bad. Study hard. What have you been doing this week? I've been having parties lately, like baby showers and stuff. I've been studying a lot. I've been playing ball with the neighbors, basketball. Why have you been having baby showers? Because we just had a little baby. He was born on Easter. He's cute. He was born early because he was supposed to be born on May 2nd. He's the smallest thing I've ever seen. He's like a doll. He weighs just a little bit more than five pounds. So you didn't have a usual kind of Easter, did you? No. We took mom to the hospital. She went in about 1 a.m. and the baby came about 10 p.m. I stayed home to take care of the little kids with my brother and uncle. We cleaned the house to surprise mom. Please explain what a baby shower is. It's when you have a party for a woman who is pregnant. They bring gifts like diapers and baby food and clothes. We did games for the adults. We played Spanish music for the people to dance. We made some hamburgers and hot dogs and passed out cake. What classes are you taking? Science social studies, math, language arts, reading lab, guided studies. That's when they help you study, and health. What languages do you speak at home? Spanish and English. With my brother, I speak English because we're used to English, but with my mom, I speak Spanish. With my dad, I speak both. We talk both languages, really. I was born in Puerto Rico, and I was about seven when we came to the mainland U.S. I didn't speak English. We were in Wisconsin. There aren't a lot of Spanish speakers in Wisconsin. The teachers would take me out of class to learn English. Is there anything that you are looking forward to doing this summer? We'll probably go to Myrtle Beach this summer. It's a whole family trip. We go to the beach or hang out at the pool at the hotel. We go out to eat and to the fun park. It has roller coasters and stuff. Next Friday is the 8th grade dance. It's like a prom, but for 8th graders. You take a date, you dress in a suit, and you go to the dance and have fun there. They'll have music and a DJ. Is there anything that you'd like to say to kids in other countries? I hope you follow your dreams and never stop believing or trying. What have you been doing this week? Swimming. I'm on the school swim team and we just won conference. First place. It's like the third most intense meet of the whole season and we won. What's happening at school? We just had exams, midterms, and it was crazy. Now I have SATs coming up, and I've got to take SATs classes. 
Is there anything else coming up? My birthday is in two months, and I'll be 17, and I'm going to buy a car. It's an 89 Toyota with four-wheel drive and 33 1250 tires and four-inch lifters and a roll bar. I have to pay for it myself. I have to pay for the insurance, which is expensive, but I don't mind. I work, and I've been saving for it. Do you like working here? I get paid to smile and talk to people. I like this job. It's fun. The bosses train us to do second mile service. They teach us the best ways to talk to the customers. We have to say, how may I serve you, not can I help you. And when we carry something for our customer, we always say, I'll carry this for you, not may I carry this for you, because people don't like to ask for help. What are you looking forward to this year? Well, next year, I have to make some big decisions. After high school, I might train to be a CNA and an EMT and join the Air Force, or I could commit to the Army and they would pay for me to train as a nurse. Right now, I'm an explorer at the Fire Academy, where we learn about being a firefighter and an EMT. I get to ride along on the rescue and fire trucks and learn what they do. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Hey, what's up? What have you been doing this week? Skateboarding and hanging out with my friends. It's spring break. Me and my friends walk to McDonald's. I'm trying to get a job there right now. I dropped job applications at like six of them everywhere. Your dad is in Afghanistan. How do you feel about that? I don't really like having him over there. I miss him a lot. I guess most people think it's special having a dad overseas, but it's not. It's really hard, and I don't get to see him a lot. When he comes home, we eat out a lot. We spend money. We play a Call of Duty a lot. That's a video game. My brother and my dad and me. We work out together. Do you worry about him? All the time. I try to keep him in my prayers. I call him when I can and talk to him. Why are you here helping feed homeless people today? My mom didn't tell me about this until about 2 o'clock when she said, we're going to go feed a bunch of people. And I was like, okay. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Hmm. Fulfill your dreams. Don't stop. What have you been doing this week? Well, this week I've been working on schoolwork and going to a swim class to get ready for a swimming meet. What are you doing in school? Oh, a lot of stuff. Math and biology and history. And I've been learning Italian. You're homeschooled, aren't you? Tell me about it. I guess it's like going to public school. But the school is only a few feet away and the teacher is your mother. My sisters and brother are my only classmates. I'm the only one in my grade. I kind of have to be responsible for getting my work done. We study and take required tests. What happens if you don't do well on a test? I haven't ever done bad on a test. I guess if I didn't pass a test, I would get a talk from my mother. Have you been doing anything else? I volunteer at Horsepower, which is a riding center. It's for kids with disabilities or who are in wheelchairs, so they can learn to ride horses. Sometimes I lead the horses, and sometimes I walk beside the horse and help the kids keep their balance and learn how to ride. What are you looking forward to this year? I'm looking forward to going to Italy. That's why I've been studying Italian, so that when I get there, hopefully I'll know some stuff. My Girl Scout troop is going. There are 13 girls going. My sister is going too. We thought it would be cool to go to a different country and see what they have there, like all the art and history over there. We have two adult leaders going with us. How are you getting money for the trip? We've been working toward this for two years. We raise funds by selling flowers in the spring and fall in wreath at Christmas. We had a spaghetti dinner and car washes. And we sell Girl Scout cookies, of course. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Mm, I hope you're okay over there and having a good time. I hope you're doing good. What have you been doing this week? This has been a busy week. I have lost to tell. Monday, I went to school and then I went to work Monday night. And Tuesday, I went to school, but only for half a day because I went on a field trip with my photography class to a local college to take pictures. And then on Wednesday, I went to a baseball game for the whole class day because all of the students who made honor roll got to go on a baseball trip. 
And then Thursday, I went to school and I went to work Thursday night. And then on Friday, I went to school and then Friday night, I went to the big birthday dinner of one of my really close friends. And today, I'm here at the service project. What do you do when you go to work? I'm the front desk secretary at a counseling center. Are you graduating from high school? I'm going to graduate this year. What will you do after that? I'm planning on going to Appalachian State. I'm going to be a double major in photography and Spanish with a minor in social work. Why do you want to study these subjects? Well, I guess these are the things that I'm extremely fond of. I love photography and helping the Hispanic community is what I'm really passionate about. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Well, I don't know. Um, I guess always think the best of people. People are trying to be the best they can be. There is hate in the world, but there is also a lot of love. What have you been doing this week? I came here to the park yesterday afternoon, and we slept here last night in that tent. It's like the kind they used in the Revolutionary War, but a little bit bigger, because people then were shorter than they are now. What do you do while you're here? We pretty much cook over the fire. I've been playing the drums, hauling wood, and throwing a tomahawk. What's a tomahawk? It's kind of like an axe. It's got only one sharp edge. You try to get it to hit a target. Are you good at that? Oh, yeah. What kind of a shirt are you wearing? Uh, it's a shirt they would have worn in the 18th century. How about your shoes, your socks? Yeah, everything I'm wearing is like clothes they wore in the 1700s. How long have you been doing reenactments? Pretty much since I was born because my parents are reenactors. We go at least once a month, pretty much all over the state of North Carolina. What did you do the rest of the week? School. Monday we had marching band practice. I play percussion, the tenor and drum. Tell us about marching band. There are 91 of us in the band. While we march, we play music and do different formations and stuff. We have formations like boxes and figure eights. We play in competitions and at football games. We've won 41 trophies in competitions. Tell me about your dog over there. Oh, he's a German Shepherd. He's two or three years old. We found him while we were at a reenactment. He was hungry and didn't have a home, so we took him home with us. When we got him, he weighed 60 pounds, and now he weighs 125 pounds. So he was pretty hungry and thin when we found him. When I wait for the school bus, he goes to the end of the road and waits with me until I actually get on the bus before he goes back to the house. He comes out to the end of the road right about the time school gets out and waits for me to get off the bus. Then he walks home with me. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Hmm. I guess hi. What have you been doing this week? Well, I go to San Jose State. Mondays and Wednesdays, I get up and work out. And I start my classes. In between classes, I have an hour and a half break. So I usually go to the library and read. Browse the internet, do homework, write essays, anything I have to do. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I usually get up and go to school for an 8.30 class. And then, since the class is anatomy, I go to the library and study, study, study. Then I have a lecture. Then I go to lunch, something fast because I have another class afterwards. Today is Friday. What are you doing? Fridays I have off, so I'm out here enjoying the weather. It's a day to do other things than reading and homework. I'm here with my mom and my two little nieces and my little cousin. We took them to story time at the library, and then we came here. How old are they? They are four, two, and nine months. What do you do on the weekends? Saturday morning, I go out for a run, see friends, or go to a family get-together. Sunday, I study. What are you studying? Nursing. Why did you decide to become a nurse? When I was 15, an out of money had quadruplets. And seeing her through the pregnancy and going to the hospital when she was there and helping her with four kids, I decided I wanted to become a nurse. Before that, I wanted to be a teacher. It changed my perspective. How many people are in your family? My mother's family had eight sisters and two brothers, but I'm her only child. There are a lot of cousins and a whole lot of little girls. We usually try to spend time together and do a lot of things together, 
Family bonding time, you could say. When I'm a nurse, I want to specialize with kids. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Well, make sure to read and get involved in things so you can pursue a career in something that you're really going to like. What have you been doing this week? After school today, we came to the park. Two of us are playing baseball, and two of us walked around making videos. Why are you making videos? Because it's fun, something to kill time. We put them on YouTube. What are you doing in school this week? CST preparation. That's California standardized testing. Everyone in 2nd through 11th grade takes the test. It helps decide what classes you get to take next year. The preparation helps us get ready for the test. What do you do on weekends? Go to the mall. Buy clothes. I play video games. I go on the computer a little. Sometimes I hang with my brother or I hang out with my friends. How do you get money to buy clothes? From mom. I have a job painting. I paint houses on weekends with my uncles, and when I get money, I use it to buy clothes. I work at East Oakland Regional Park. We go and paint benches, pull up weeds, make the park cleaner. I get money and then I buy clothes or food. I'm a junk food junkie. Or I might take these friends to the movies. Is there anything you want to say to kids in other countries? Stay safe. Have as much fun as possible. Learn to turf. It's a kind of dance. Hmm. Don't go to the bad stuff like drugs or alcohol. Or war. Admire the little things. What have you been doing this week? I've gone to school every day this week and we had exams next week. So we have been studying a lot. I play two sports, and I've gone to basketball practice and volleyball practice. And we had a basketball game that we just won. Did you have to travel to get to the game? We travel about 30 minutes to play the other team. Does playing two sports take time? A lot. I usually have two hours of basketball practice every day and two and a half hours of volleyball practice twice a week. What are you studying? I'm in pre-calculus, and I take Spanish 3 and physics. I also take humanities, which is like history and English combined. Is that all of your classes? Yes, ma'am. What will you do this weekend? Study for my exams. That's about all I have time to do. How is your family? Well, my brother is sick. He has a cough and can't sleep well, but we're really okay. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? I hope you have a great year, do well, and study hard. What have you been doing this week? Well, in school, we're having a lot of new math and stuff. And we took a couple of tests this week also. What's happening outside of school? Baseball's about to start, and I'm really ready for that. I'm in a pony league, and it's recreational. It's not a very big league. What you do is your parents sign you up and pay a little money for you to play, and it doesn't cost very much. Basketball season just ended, and I was playing that. There are a lot of other teams in that league, and my birthday is in four days, and I'll be 14. How will you celebrate? Oh, I don't know. I'll probably go play laser tag or something. I think your parents are divorced. Is that right? Yeah. I live with my mom normally, and every Thursday I go to my dad's for the evening from 6 to 9. Every other weekend I go to my dad's house and stay from Friday to Sunday, and then I go back to my mom's. What are you looking forward to? Baseball. And I'm kind of excited to go into high school this fall. I'm probably going to take a class called Scientific Visualization and Graphics. It's really cool. You can learn how to make video games and stuff. Will you do anything special this summer? Probably go on a couple of camping trips with my family. My mom's family most of the time. We like camping a lot. At the end of the school year, we have a camping trip where there is a 13-mile trail down the mountain. We camp for like three days and then go hike down the trail. It's pretty cool. Do you know what you'd like to do after high school? Not really. I have a faint idea. I'd like to go into science or engineering. We did a career finder thing on the computer at school, and it suggested science or engineering for me. The first four careers were all kinds of engineering. The fourth was nuclear engineering. Right, as if I'm going to handle nuclear bombs or something. Is there anything you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Just hi, I guess. What have you been doing this week? Basically, I go to school. After I go to school, I might hang out, socialize with my friends at Burger King or McDonald's. First I study, and then I hang out with my friends and socialize. On weekends, I might go to the movies, go to a party, get my hair did, or go to the nail shop. What did you do last weekend? 
I went to a party and I watched movies on TV every day. What are you doing in school this week? I'm studying biology. We're studying the ecosystem. I don't like biology too much. Actually, I hate it. It's my least favorite class. What classes do you like? I like dance. That's my favorite subject. And math. I have to do a lot of research in dance. Dance sounds unusual. Is it a regular subject? Dance is like any other subject. It's like physical education. We study all kinds of dance ballet, modern, jazz, hip hop. We do it and we study about it. I have to do my research on it every day. My teacher gives us a famous dancer like Alvin Ailey. He's dead now, but he founded a famous dance company. I get on the computer and do research on him and his dance company. We have questions like what kind of positioning do they use? What kind of energy do they use? Do you like living in San Francisco? Actually, I used to live in San Francisco, but I moved to Oakland a year ago. San Francisco is a great city, but it's very large. You have to know your way. In Oakland, well, you have to avoid some parts of Oakland, but there is less drama in Oakland. You feel free in Oakland. Is there anything you want to say to kids in other countries? Do you want to visit San Francisco? You should think about it because it's a good city. What have you been doing this week? I've been sort of preparing for finals, finishing up work, trying to balance the things I need to do with the things I should do. I need to do things like studying for a test now or getting in assignments that are past due. And I should do things like exercising or catching up on things that will help me up ahead on tests in the future. I've been trying to work on a big English assignment and prepare for finals. I stayed up all night trying to finish, as well as preparing for a performance on the clarinet. Have you been doing anything else? I've been trying to get a basic draft of a book I want to write. I feel like the essays you write at school are constricting. This is writing I enjoy doing. It helps me relax and wind down. What do you want to do after high school? After high school, I want to go to a university and get a doctorate in some kind of science. Right now, I'm aiming for entomology, the study of insects, especially ants. That's my passion. I'm really interested in the complex societies they form and how they work together. If you want to get me talking, ask me about ants. They have really complex and diverse societies. They're the most complex of all animal societies. It's ants, not elephants or primates or monkeys, that are the closest to human societies. I know that when you were small, you had serious health problems. Your parents had to take you to the hospital really fast many times. Is that still true? I still have health issues. I have allergy induced asthma. That means I have allergies that sometimes make it very difficult to breathe. It limits me from doing activities or going places sometimes. It's just a part of my life. I live with it. Are you doing anything for Martin Luther King Day? I'm probably going to study with a friend because I have finals right away. We had a powerful assembly program at school. The African American Student Community Group gave a serious eye opener on how bad it was at that time period. A lot of people were disturbed by it. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Hmm. In the end, we're all human. It's good to have an identity and celebrate your history, but in the end, we're all human. What have you been doing this week? Let me think. I go to school. I had soccer practice only once a week because it's winter. I went to the Train Sabine Orchestra. They come to town every year. They're really good. What kind of music do they do? It's like rock, but it's like Christmas too, sort of. It's a really good show. They've got lasers and pyrotechnics. I also went to church and choir practice. I do the soundboard most of the time. What are you studying in school? I'm taking pre calculus, AP European history, band, English, French, chemistry, and environmental science. What instrument do you play in band? I play the bassoon for a concert band. For marching band, I play the tuba. They're completely different instruments. You can't march with a bassoon. What do you study in environmental science? So far, we've studied a lot about weather and weather patterns. We also learned about earthquakes and tornadoes and that sort of stuff. What will you do after high school? I plan to go to college. I'm not sure what I'll go for yet. Probably something in science because I enjoy science. Is there anything that you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Um. I think that a lot of the things that the rest of the world thinks about America that they get in movies or on TV, from reality TV shows and things like that, don't really portray American life. We're probably not that different from you.
What have you been doing this week? We haven't been doing a lot at school because it is right before the break, so we don't do a lot. They try to squish in a lot of tests during the week before we get out, so we can start a new unit after the break. So I had a math test and a science test. In orchestra, we've been learning new notes, how to read them, and how to do them on the instrument. What instrument do you play? I play the viola. Is there anything else happening? I have a guitar lesson this afternoon, and Christmas is coming very soon. On Christmas, most of my friends wake up in the morning and open presents, but my family doesn't traditionally celebrate Christmas. We don't have any Vietnamese holidays in this part of the year, so we just celebrate Christmas for the fun of it. We don't open presents in the morning. We prepare food all day, and then my family and friends come over, and we open presents at night and eat. We usually make Vietnamese food and sometimes chicken wings too. Have you been buying and making presents? I usually make cards or homemade gifts, but this year I haven't had time. I had this test in language arts a couple weeks ago and I failed it. I got really upset and I asked the teacher if I could have a retake. At first she said no, and I started crying because I knew my mom would get really upset. So the teacher let me take a retake. So I've been studying. I got a hundred on a retake. <laughs> What do you study in language arts? We learn parts of speech, grammar, and do presentations in class. Recently, we made a parody of the night before Christmas, and we presented it today. Anything else? My birthday's tomorrow, so I'm having friends over. We're going to have a sleepover. We'll go ice skating, and then we'll go rent movies, and we'll go back home and watch them. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, let me think. You should work hard for your future because it'll pay off. What have you been doing this week? Well, exam time is coming up, and I've been trying to study hard for them, taking notes and all. It's a very stressful time for me. How do you prepare for the exams? Well, the teachers give us notes, and we write them down and study them, and then take the exams. But most of us barely have any time to study, especially the basketball team. They have a lot of games next week. I'm actually in the church choir. I have to do all my exam work and practice for the choir. And we have all this stuff coming up for Christmas. Tell me about singing in the choir. We usually have practice once or twice a week. We sing, we get to meet each other, and we all have fun together. And we all sing together at church. The choir sings every Sunday. My dad sings every Sunday, and I do too. But we have extra practices for Christmas music. On ordinary Sunday, we do one to three songs, and Christmas we do I don't know, like ten songs, and that's why we have extra practices for Christmas music. Tell me what you did this weekend. This weekend, I got to go to my grandmother's house, which was a very big treat for me. I love to help her out, and I did work in her yard. I got paid for it, but I'd work without pay any time she wants me to because I really love her. Tell me about her. My grandmother is very sweet. She helps a lot of people. She's a Methodist, so she goes to the Methodist church every Sunday. She helps anyone who is in need. She has two sweet dogs, Belle and Ella. One is a golden lab, and the other is a mixture. She has the best cooking ever. Her cake is wonderful. Her pies are fantastic. If the only thing I ever had to eat for the rest of my life. Was her cooking? I would be happy. She makes the best grilled cheese ever. How is your family? My family's been okay. I mean, a little argument here and there, but that's okay. It's a very happy time we have. We're kind of last-minute people, so we set up everything last minute and then get ready for Christmas. Is there anything you would like to say to kids in other countries? Happy holidays. What have you been doing this week? Well,、um, I've been going to glee practice to perform for a winter concert. I've been doing a lot of homework, and I'm going to piano practice later today. Tell me about glee. It's this group of people who sing and dance the songs for the season, or whatever we like. Songs from the '50s, back in the past, or modern music. We have a teacher who leads us. It's an after-school activity. The regular class in school is chorus. Glee is an additional activity. What classes are you taking? Um. Well, I take algebra one, and advanced language arts, and science, and social studies, chorus, 
technology, and PE. What are you doing in your piano lessons? Well, right now I'm just a beginner, so I'm studying how to play. Why did you decide to study piano? I see how amazing the pianists are and how they're really good at playing these amazing pieces. So I decided to learn how to do that. Did you celebrate Thanksgiving this past week? My sister and I celebrate Thanksgiving with our family that came around the state. Some of our cousins are in college and they came. We ate turkey, of course, and corn, mashed potatoes, gravy, and these special Vietnamese chips. They're hard to describe, though. What are you going to do this weekend? I'm going to my temple and practice dancing for Vietnamese New Year. It's in February. I go to like a Buddhist temple. We have lots of different celebrations. How many people in your family can speak Vietnamese? Um, basically all of us. The kids are kind of losing the Vietnamese culture, so we're trying to keep it up. And keep up with our Vietnamese. Do you know what you want to do when you're an adult? I really don't know. I'm still trying to decide, but I want to do something that helps other people. Maybe a nurse, but I'm not sure. Is there anything that you'd like to say to kids in other countries? Um, well, keep learning and have a good education so you can have a good future in life. What have you been doing this week? Well, this week my cousins came down from New York and we celebrated Thanksgiving at my house with the other side of the family that is in Charlotte. We had a turkey and everybody brought something like a dessert and we all just sat at the table and had fun and afterward we played games. Are there any other foods that are Thanksgiving traditions for your family besides the turkey? We always have my grandmother's broccoli and cheese casserole, which sounds gross, but it's really delicious. We had mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes. My mom made her amazing orange cranberry relish. And this year we also had ham, which was different. We also had pecan pie and pumpkin cheesecake. What kind of games did you play? Well, this year we played Wii basketball and tennis. Did you go shopping on Friday? We went to Charlotte because it's my aunt's birthday. So we hung out with them for a while and watched the football game between Auburn and Alabama. My mom went to a bookstore for a while, but we didn't do any other shopping. What have you been doing today? Well, my dad and I went for a run together, and then we decided to stop and take a break here to get something to drink. It's a little cold outside. How far do you run? Well, it'll be five miles after we run back home from here. Did you do anything else this week? Well, I saw the new Harry Potter movie, which was very good with a lot of my friends. Tonight, I'll babysit my little brother and my sister, so my parents can go see the Harry Potter movie together. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, well, I don't know if we're that different or not, but it doesn't seem like we are. I would like to say, um, well, good luck and have a good time with your life. What have you been doing this week? Um, we're on a school field trip. It's a four-day trip across our state and back. Where have you gone? Um, we went to UNC and learned about the basketball history and their star basketball players. Then we went to Somerset Plantation and we learned about how they treated the slaves and how they made candles and wrote. And we learned about the owners too. Then we went to the Blackbeard Museum and we learned about Blackbeard, how he became a pirate and how he died and what his battle style was. Then we learned about the Wright Brothers history. That's today. Before we came on to the trip, we built replicas of their gliders at school. We researched what they flew and how they flew and what inspired them. Are you doing anything just for fun or are all your activities educational? Um, tonight we'll have a dance and last night we went bowling. Do you have any special interests? I like sports. I like basketball and I'm on the school baseball team. What are your plans for the future after you finish school? Um, I want to be a zoologist. I want to study animals and I might be like my older sister and be a photographer and take pictures of animals too. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, you guys are going to get there. Just keep working hard. What have you been doing this week? I've been going to school and playing outside with friends mostly. What are you doing in school? We just finished our integrate tests. School ends in two weeks. What do you play when you play with friends? I play football, soccer, basketball with the guys in the neighborhood. We play at Evan's house. He has a basketball hoop in his yard. And I see a fishing pole in your hands. Yeah, I like to go to the pond and fish. I normally go about once a week. I usually catch a few. Today I hooked five, but they all got off. 
But I did catch two. It really keeps you going. It makes you think, I really want to catch that fish. My dad loves the fish, so he taught me. I don't think you've always lived in this neighborhood. Is that right? Yeah, we lived in Switzerland for two years. I liked it, but I like it here more. There's more stuff to do here, more entertainment. But it was fun in Switzerland. Did you learn a new language in Switzerland? I already knew Swiss German because my mom was from Switzerland. I learned it when I was three or four. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, I love from America. What have you been doing this week? Well, this week I've been focusing on trying to get my extracurricular started because the year has just started and I've been trying to study and getting my grades up this year. What kind of extracurricular activities do you do? Oh, I've been doing speech and debate and battle of the books and soon Science Olympiad is going to get started and I'm going to be doing that. And in addition, after school, I also have a Jewish youth program that I do, and I help with the kids in Sunday school at Temple. I'm basically like a teacher's assistant. And what is Battle of the Books? Battle of the Books is a school club that is focused on a competition with a list of books that we get every year, and we compete on our knowledge of the books. What kind of books? Well, this year there are 15 on the list, and I just started reading The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. And the list is mostly fiction, but there is some nonfiction in there. And what is the Science Olympiad? Science Olympiad is a school club that is also geared to preparing towards a competition, but it's for a state science competition where we compete in partners on different science events. What do you hope to do after high school? After high school, I really hope to get a degree in chemistry because it's what I'm really passionate about and then probably go to medical school to focus on people and the brain, which I'm also really interested in. And I want to be a neurologist. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a new English speaker. I've been here for six years, so it's kind of surreal to talk to kids who are also learning English. What is your first language? My first language is Hebrew. I'm from Israel. How did you end up here? Well, my dad got a transfer from work, and we all thought it would be a really good experience, and I have loved it so far, and so has my whole family. So, is there anything you would like to say to kids in other countries? Well, first of all, hi, and I guess some really good piece of advice is really go after what you love and work towards doing what you're passionate about. What have you been doing this week? different week than usual. Last Friday, my school orchestra went to Atlanta, Georgia, where we went to perform in a competition, and we went everywhere in Atlanta after that. We went to the Hard Rock Cafe and even got to listen to the Atlanta Symphony. It was like a two and a half hour performance, but they were unbelievable. It was great. The next day, we attended the actual competition and were ranked as being superior, which is the best ranking, of course. And after that, we went to Six Flags, the amusement park, for about nine hours and rode just about every ride there. And then the next day, we went to the Georgia Aquarium and got to see all sorts of sea life that was really cool from all over the world. And after that, we went to the world of Coca-Cola and got to taste sodas from every continent. It was very neat. Following that day, we got back on the bus and rode five hours all the way home watching Jack Black movies. Who is Jack Black? Oh, he's a real goofy actor. The bus ride was kind of long because of Atlanta's traffic, so it felt good to be back in my little old hometown. What instrument do you play? Well, my main instrument is the piano, but I also play the bass guitar and the upright bass, which is what I play in the school orchestra. What do you do on an ordinary day? On an ordinary school day... I try to wake up at 6 o'clock every morning and get some extra piano practice before going to what we call zero period at school. Most students start at first period, but zero period is like an extra class you can take before that. I take jazz ensemble. I get home after school at around 4.30 and then I do homework, eat dinner, practice instruments or maybe go to church for a music rehearsal, and I usually try to go to bed by 11. Is there anything you would like to say to kids in other countries? Um, let's see. I would probably like to give the advice to make sure to cherish your youthful years. I do. What have you been doing this week? 
Well, this week I started with having a day off on Monday, but I've been doing a lot of calculus homework the entire week. I was lucky enough to go to a conference today on women's philanthropy, and I was so excited to meet a lot of people who are involved in supporting many philanthropies which deal with feeding the hungry in my area. Why did you get to go to the conference? I got to go to the conference because I am on the service council at my school, and I was one of the ten in the county who was invited. I was able to meet Barbara Bush's granddaughter, and she was speaking about her charity that she has had for about ten years, which is called Feed, which basically feeds hungry children in America as well as around the world. What does the service council do? What the service council does is try to get my school united in doing service projects or raising money for local food banks. We also put together Christmas care packages for abused as well as neglected children. What did you do for the Labor Day holiday? For the Labor Day holiday, I was doing a lot of studying to get ready for my calculus and Spanish class. But we also had a barbecue for dinner, and we ate as a family, which is something we always do on holidays and long weekends. Can you tell me a little bit about your family? My parents came to America from India, and they met in college. My grandmother is Portuguese, and I am very close to her. I also have a younger sister named Capri, and she is 15 years old. Does your family have any special traditions? Yes, we have lots of special traditions, and they're really all important to me. I grew up cooking with my grandmother and my mother, so baking cookies for Christmas is a huge tradition. We love Italian food, grilled chicken, and salads. What do you want to do after high school? I would love to go to college and pursue my passions for Spanish, history, and business. Do you have an idea of a career you'd like to follow? I would love to somehow bring all of these passions together by doing a type of corporate job, but I'm not really quite sure yet. Is there anything that you would like to say to kids in other countries? I'm so excited to be able to talk to you guys and share part of my culture with you guys. I hope one day to travel to your countries and to learn a little bit more about how small the world really is.